you know, as I tell friends uh, or people I'm trying to lay it out in plain terms, if, 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 you're, if you're feeling bad and you've got a pain, I guess some people would say, I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't know what it, what it, want to find out what it is. Whereas other people would want to find out and do something about it. So even if you're a climate change skeptic, the fact that I think 16 out of the last 17 years since 2000 have been the warmest on record, wouldn't you want to find out? I mean, you know, people uh, who I believe Pruitt said, well, it's uh, correlation doesn't prove causation with CO2 going up and, and warming temperatures, but you could have high school children where you set up an experiment and increase the level of CO2, uh, methane, another gas, it's a greenhouse gas or nitrous oxide, and it traps in the heat. Oh, and so and since Henry Ford figured out how to mass produce cars, and we've taken this carbon that has essentially been taken out of the game, buried in the earth for thousands and millions of years, and burn it and release it into the atmosphere over the the last decades and decades, we've increased the CO2 in the atmosphere with these burning fossil fuels. And, and you know, you could use chemical markers and figure out how much of that CO2 we put there, and we've increased the CO2 in the atmosphere like over 40%. And the last time that the CO2 level has been this high is four million years ago. And, and that was a steady change. This is zip because we've taken carbon that's been out of the game and put it into the atmosphere. And so, I mean, I, every, maybe 20 years ago, there were a lot of skeptics, or not skeptics, but just show me the data in the science community. Now it's, you know, 99.9%. Um, so. You know, I, I'm talking to farmers and, and they realize that um, things are c coming up early. There's a, a term called phenology, it's when Birds migrate us when blossoms bloom, and, and of course, we're having a bit of a cool wave now, but it was the second warmest February on record. Colleagues and I, directors of marine laboratories all over the country, are, are trying to uh, talk to their delegations, trying to um, convince um, the people that will finally sign off on the budget that, um, you know, a, a healthy environment is good for the economy, creating green jobs. Um, if, if we want to limit carbon output from fuel plants and make carbon um, more efficient cars, the United States could create technology and lead the world in this technology and, and have this green economy that would, would help us, not hurt us. And so, you know, I think the tack we're trying to take is not, not saying, no, silly, this is the way it is, but try to appeal to people's common sense that, that um, actually if you don't take these environmental actions, that it'll cost you more in, in, in the end. So, you know, having climate change studies here in the eastern shore and, and how sea level rise is going to increase and how storms are going to affect the counties on the eastern shore. Wouldn't you as a county manager, somebody on the planning commission, like to know this information so that you build things in places where they'll be safer? When there's a storm coming, you know where to put people to keep them out of harm's way. And so this is, this is just common sense. It's just kind of conservative principles. I, I think for our children and our grandchildren, it, it is going to be a different world. Um, and that some areas will f flood and, and, and have more deserts. Um, other areas are going to be greener and warmer and it's going to be more pleasant. And so just um, like the earth, hundreds of thousands of years ago, things will shift, shift around um, and that will cause political conflict. Um, already to a certain extent, the, the, the fish, as things warm up, they're, they're moving to the northern parts towards the poles, both directions. And so countries that had, didn't have to regulate cod bef fishing before now are, and where cod used to be, they aren't. So many areas of the eastern shore are gonna be underwater um, you may choose to move people out of those areas and not put seawalls in or whatever to allow that to flood so that there's relief so that Annapolis and other areas won't flood as much. And, and so uh, uh, states, countries would have to make these decisions of where, where you put your money in terms of moving people, where you put your money in terms of 
large pumps and things to keep the water out versus, well, we're just going to let that go and, and, and move somewhere else. And so kind of looking at some of these scenarios, we're actually trying to develop partnerships with the reinsurance industry, you know, because they're, they're far ahead of us in planning. I don't think even if we cut way back on CO2 emissions today, as you pointed out, you know, it's going to be years and years before we pull out of this. And um, as, as Lovejoy and others have said, it may be too late. So, you know, there's some wild ideas of giant shades you put up in space to block the sun and, and um, CO2 injection into the earth. Um, you, you know, you almost have to take a, a kind of a large scale engineering approach. And, and, and we've, we've kind of shied away from that so far, but at some point, you may not be able to avoid it. So there are.